Alright, what's up? I'm back and I'm going to do the spiritual warfare part 3 video. So, again, I hope the mic is good. Um, this is like, I'm, I've used multiple different mics. I've downloaded like a software uh, to get rid of like certain buzzing and all this type of stuff. So, uh, if it's still doing it, there's nothing really I can do. I turn up the volume, like, if they're still doing it, there's literally nothing else I could do. But it's still audible, so... At the end of the day, you, sh you, you should be able to still hear me, but still, um, since I can't do anything about it, I'm just going to work with it. <laughs> so, uh, in the Spiritual Warfare Part 3 video, I'm going to start with this uh, concept, like, I'm not going to get too deep. I'm going to start with this uh, Anunnaki Neturu topic I was talking about in previous videos. Uh, if you haven't seen the Spiritual Warfare Part 1 and Part 2 videos, I'd watch those and the Satanism video first, but... Um, yeah, I, in one video I was talking about, uh, I would talk about Anunnaki and Nedarusa. I said I would talk about it, so I'm going to do it. And um, I'm not going to really go too deep, though, into, like, actually, like, what the Anunnaki versus Neturu are. I'm just going to talk a little bit about, like, the concept of, like, basically the concepts of them. Um, I think Makalesi has an Anunnaki versus Neturu video. You could just type in Makalesi, Anunnaki versus Neturu, and... I feel like 13 Science Astrology has one too, so uh, I, I don't feel the need to like go into who they are, these types of things, right? But uh, And I talked about it in the cloning video, so you're kind of going to get a repeat of the stuff I was just talking about. But when it comes down to it, it's really about this concept of like nature versus technology. It's kind of like this concept of um, when so-called primitive people are people who live with nature, right? Like Egyptian gypsy kind of thing, right? And the Neturu, the Neturu if you don't know, are of uh, Egypt. So, just to show you, Neturu, um, go into like Egyptian deities. Not all, not all of them are Neturu, but like it's, um, they basically go into the Egyptian pantheon, you know? And when you look at the word Egyptian, you see the word gypsy, you know, like gyp, like the word gypsy are both, and the Egyptian has the same root in the, in the middle of it, but then it has some added aspects to it. So, uh, so yeah, we're just basically talking about Sumeria or Babylon, um, not really Sumeria, I guess, but Babylon essentially, and, uh, with Babylon, I don't know, they have, it's a little bit different because they got, like, from a biblical standpoint, you already know, like, they got destroyed because of, like, homosexuality and all these types of stuff, but, uh, when you look at these reptilians, you see, like, these kind of reptilian beings and these bird beings, right? So, you know, people have these, like, their own kind of definitions of what Anunnaki are and, uh, and, and like, their own interpretation of the Egyptian mythologies or Egyptian history and all this type of stuff, so... Again, I'm not going to get into that because that's just kind of like a... It turns into like a debate between your philosophy versus another's. But the way I'm going to look at it is... And if you don't want to agree with the whole they got destroyed because of uh, homosexuality, you can even look at it as like... Um, they got destroyed for progressiveness, if you want to look at it like that. Um, so progressiveness goes into technological advancement. So when it comes into technological advancement, and I was talking about this in the last video, if you... There's two ways to look at it. You can advance with nature kind of like how every animal will adapt to its environment right or you can look and or you can look at it at a level of um of basically not adapting to your environment but adapting the environment to you so that goes into a level of basically uh terraforming so what I was talking about is, in the, in the cloning video, is you get to a level where you, like, because we're obviously not living in, like, tribes and, and primitive, and so-called primitive types of ways, right? We're not living like that right now. So, at the end of the day, we're living within this, like, technological reality, right? Now, when you look at it like that, there's two ways to go. You can, and it's, you can't really go back to the primitive route because... Um, the planets change for the most part and people who are living that way like they're in the environment that lets them do that right 
and for the most part for us we're like within the middle of cities and all this type of stuff so it's just like literally like it's completely out of touch with reality to do something like that but i'm not saying to go the technological advancement route but i'm just kind of putting a perspective on it so when it comes to this whole on and occy thing basically the technological route becomes a thing where it's almost like you're harvesting nature to progress so when you think about like the paper industry um, and how it's taking like trees and all this type of stuff down and when you look at um, how the meat industry is and how like horrible that industry is and how people are it's, there's like a much less demand for vegetation and like fruit and that kind of stuff but more meat and then people will clear cut areas to you know have more farms and so on right so they, they can have more meat so people can um, keep partaking in certain like you could say rituals and things like that it, it becomes a thing where um because everything on the planet has is, is a finite resource for the most part so except for the, really the natural even the natural elements do but like in a way like for example you can't really like the sun you could say the sun is a finite resource but it's like in our perspective of our lifetime it's almost infinite because it's not like in your let's say you die by a hundred years old like it's not like the sun's going to be burnt out by a hundred like to you it's like an infinite resource but for the most part like to your perspective but in the grand scheme of things it's still a finite resource because eventually it's supposed to burn out and all this type of stuff right according to science but so according to the social technological uh, perspective but when it comes down to it uh basically you're gonna have to harvest the things on the planet for your own personal gain so it's like a extremely advanced parasitic way of living and not just like normal parasitic like type of you attached to a host type of thing it's like an advanced version of that so for example like just to talk to you like i have to use a laptop which harnesses a bunch of crystals right and all the crystals that are making it possible for us to use this laptop and the phones and stuff like that is taking is being taken from the core of the planet right and the planet well not the core sorry but it's being produced from the core uh from the core and and um being pushed out to uh, higher levels to closer to like the ground like the caves and like you know areas we can mine and stuff like that so basically these crystals take like hundreds of millions of years to be to reach ages of maturity depending on what it is for example gold takes like a hundred million years to reach the age of maturity where it can actually be usable and then you have to use fire to transform it into its raw uh, from its raw ore to a pure material of gold only right and take away all the other um other things that are in the ore right so you even have to transform it from there and use fire but when it comes down to it if it takes hundreds of millions of years for these to be produced and then we're just draining the planet dry of crystals and all these types of things right the earth has a way of karmically balancing things and basically once you take all these things you're going to have like a like a rude awakening for um for taking all these resources so like for example how india china and like a lot of these, like pakistan like a lot of these places are polluted with air right and the air pollution is like really bad right they build these huge towers and these carbon towers like these carbon filters and stuff like that um which i think i could show one but this it's not really that important but So yeah, you see those at the bottom of the screen, which these are like towers to build, filter out air pollution, right? And if you just want to look at the air pollution itself, it's horrible. And it's because of how much, you know, everything is made in China. So all the things that we get manufactured, right? And most of the stuff that we have here are manufactured in these countries, right? Especially in China. So the manufacturing process, like how I just explained, uses the fire element and then using the fire element, it will basically create byproducts and these byproducts turn into basically what you're seeing here as pollution right so what happens is um what happens is at, at a certain point because we're mass producing for like nine billion people on the planet right and and possibly more that we don't even know about and at the end of the day when you're producing all this pollution and producing all of this um, toxic waste oh, it's about to go off I'm just gonna wait this out <laughs>
Yeah, again, this thing only, I have to restart it every 10 minutes because free, free, it's free, it's a free program. So, um, basically, all the toxic waste and all these types of things, what happens is, um, is basically the planet's getting blood drive, its resources, right? So if it looked like this, and this is more of like, you could say, even though, oh, excuse me, even though this is like, um, still has like buildings and roads and stuff like that, this is still more with nature, but as you can tell, they cleared a lot of the trees, right? To have way more roads, and then uh, more roads is more travel, so people can like work more, and it's more interconnected, right? But people can work more, and then the the more they produce is basically the way that is is what's causing um, the pollution, right? So this was clearly not meant to happen. Like it's like for the betterment of the planet. This is basically like if you're just smoking a bunch of cigarettes and it, it's just like the equivalent of just like unhealthy living, but in a planetary sense. So when it comes to the on Anunnaki versus Netaru type of topic, so the world system is run basically by, you could say, I don't want to call them Anunnaki, but like you, you could say these, the world system is run by people that have a higher intelligence and higher, um, higher technological, they have a technological advancement. So when it comes to like a lot of shows and movies and stuff like that, there's usually a lot of topic. A lot of them are the same synonymous topics usually where, um, they kind of get off this topic where like, there's a race of like these advanced beings that either create the people to work as a slave force, or they go to a planet where there's already people and they either turn them into a slave force if they didn't create them and regardless of that point they somehow drain the energy like regardless of whether they create them or they find them they drain the energy of these people in whatever types of ways and then drain the planet dry and drain all the people dry of their energy and and resources and physical everything on the planet like basically their livelihood everything whether it's stargate and the rate that are these like albino pasty like vampire looking like people who just like drain everything versus like the Atlanteans right and like the descendants of them um whether it be um I was explaining in Naruto how like um in the cloning video how there's like literally a group of these in like interdimensional beings that travel planet to planet and they're like these literally like albino pale not like white but like these albino albino pale like white beings not like European white but I mean like albino like the whitest thing possible and they um travel planet to planet and they basically drain the people they what happens is they put these divine trees on each planet which relates to the tree of life and um in religion and all religions and stuff and what happens is the tree drains like the spirituality the spiritual energy because like in naruto the biggest thing is like chakra which is like spiritual energy they use for um that it, it's en spiritual energy that's like tapped into the planet that they use to like perform like they have certain abilities and stuff like that from it right and this is kind of where the netaru part comes in so like that would be the netaru side of it almost it's like the people working naturally with it and then they have a give and take relationship with the environment so the environment will give them certain like abilities because of like their uh them building with it and stuff like that but then there will be a group of people like this clan uh they're called like the Ot otisuka clan in the show and they come and they drain the they plant these divine trees it harnesses all the spiritual energy of the people and then it and it bears these fruit like one fruit or like a couple fruit and what happens is they when they eat the fruit they can basically um they're immortal from that and they gain basically uh, the abilities of everything from that planet all the natural abilities of that planet so if there's like a million different abilities that a million different people have then like this one fruit will have all of it in it and this one person will gain all the abilities from eating the fruit so with that basically um what happens is that's kind of like the concept of this like Anunnaki versus Netaru topic I'm kind of getting into so it's like a, a race of like interdimensional space traveling and not just like flying around a ship kind of space it could be like that as well but they like a lot of the it depends what show or what movie or what like what religion what mythology what whatever you look at they have like slightly different variations right so it could be any of them but 
essentially they come to the planet with high, like extremely advanced technology, and they basically make the people into some kind of form of slave where they just drain their energy in some kind of way. And what happens is they essentially take it all and then drain the planet dry. And then that's the Neturu means nature, right? And like essentially, so the nature energy of the planet and then, um, it's like, it's like, you know how vampires, they're immortal in, in TV and movies and stuff like that, and they drink blood to stay alive? It's the exact same concept. So vampirism isn't just drinking blood. It could be feeding off people's energy. It's a parasitic relationship. It could be feeding off someone's energy. It could be the planet's energy. It's just this parasitic relationship where you stay immortal, basically, by, um, like, physically immortal and never dying by basically harnessing the energy of whatever you're parasitically attached to. So, that's this whole Anunnaki versus Neturu topic. Now, that's like the, essentially like the, um, the gist of it. So, Neturu is like nature spirits and like so on, like I was explaining. All these guys got like, you could say like almost different abilities based off of the different aspect of nature that they're related to. But then the Anunnaki is more like a, uh, you could probably be more like an advanced race of beings that are, um, that are more into like genetic manipulation and creating like hybrids of different beings and like more into um like portals because these are all portals that you're seeing right here a lot of these things are portals um so like working interdimensionally which is that interdimensional topic i was talking about right so that's kind of the portal concept so uh, let me see if i can find any more portals yeah so this is this is the tree of life but it's, it's really this portal concept like these hybrid chimera kind of concept like you, you see these reptilians and stuff right so what it is when i'm what is that? Oh, okay i just haven't seen that but yeah what it is what it is is when you get into and genetic manipulation which like a lot of people have been promoting for dominocky but genetically manipulating people but again i have a whole thing about that because i'll probably do a creation video eventually in the video in the future because people have um, they go into circles where they say like if aliens created us and like we're we're we got created from these aliens da, da, da. but then who created the aliens and who created the aliens and created those aliens and where how did the first being get created and they're just trying to run away from certain types of divin divination right so but that that's um that's basically uh yeah, no, this is no, this is relevant, but um, that that's essentially what I'm getting into. So, but yeah, I don't really need to get into the whole creation topic. I'll kind of yeah, see, yeah, I'm not person that or Macalessi's videos are coming out, so she does some videos on you can check out. So just type in Macalessi M A K L E S I right, and then um, I'm not person that or then there's some science astrology also about some videos on that if you want to I guess more about these guys and then this guy's from the movie Alien and Prometheus right and that's kind of what I mean it's like always these albino like always these like al extremely albino vampires and um I'll, I'll, I'll show you more of what I mean so the Wraith and Stargate are these like albino vampire dread dreaded beings that are like they're just basically vampires. It's basically the best way to explain them. And then um, the Naruto, the Otsu, the Otsu clan, which is spelled, I butchered the spelling, but it's spelled like that. Um, yeah, so it's these like advanced tech, and they're always technologically advanced, and they always come in like, like, it's like a key part to them. So they, yeah, I don't really want to go, I'm going to do a video with something about Naruto just to explain. Um, a lot of concepts based off of what they show you in the show, but so when you get when you get the understanding of this whole vampire concept, so now when you get into this has to do with dragons as well. So dragons have to do with the Anunnaki as well. Now dragons um, and vampires and reptilians they're all related. So basically, you talked about like Satan being like a reptile that was like standing up, like you kind of just saw as. Um, when you just saw it here, you can clearly see a standing, or is it so basically like this, but you can see in the hieroglyphics and the statues, right?
So you can clearly see in Babylon they have these these like reptiles that stand, like these humanoid reptiles, right? And a lot of people know about these. So that's what we call like you could say reptilians and such, right? Now like all these and um, when you really get into it I'll, I'll just talk while I look for it at the same time, but uh, when you really get into it, uh, dragons, basically, because it says like that he was forced on his, I'll speak on here and I'll talk for a bit, but he was forced on his belly, right? Like Satan was forced on his belly after whatever it was that went down, right? So uh, in the garden of Eden and the tricking and the serpents and all that stuff, right? So basically that's kind of where like a reptilian gets into like, the whole concept of being a serpent and then a dragon and a serpent are definitely related to each other. Now, uh, basically it's like a, you can almost call it like an angel version, like a, like a reptile with wings is basically a dragon, but then a dragon is like dragging its belly, it's kind of, it's something like that. Like that's why like Lord of the Rings is fully really cord in gold and all this other stuff, like dragons are basically, um, when I, when I say hoarding gold, it's the same thing as being like a vampire and like sucking all the energy of something and like how I explained, um, what's it called, the, uh, uh, Anunnaki that have like a better technologically advanced and like that are basically hoarding all the resources and trying to be, like, use it for immortality and the dragons like hibernate and sleep a lot and they're basically like mortal and all this type of stuff, so essentially that's what, um, that's what they do. Now, reptilians, now, because I don't want to, like, lose people in this, so you got to see the connection between, like, vampires, reptiles, reptilians, um, and dragons. Now, when it comes into dragons, dragon rebellion, so, like, for example, in that Otsuki clan, um, in Naruto, they, um, they have, uh, actually, I'm going to skip that for now. Like, I'm going to skip that for now. I'll probably come back to it. But, Okay, the reptilians, what do reptiles do? Like chameleons and stuff, that they shapeshift, right? That's what they're known for, shapeshifters. So, when you see something like this, being like a shapeshifter, um, it's definitely important to understand, like, for example, Maccabees, and, uh, I'm not even going to look it up, but Maccabees, I think, 41 or 14, 1 or what? It's Maccabees something in the, in the Bible that uh, the heathens will paint themselves in the likeness of us, and it's also called iconoclasm, where... Um, a group will paint themselves basically like it's like a it's like a religious political and uh socio socioeconomic tool to put someone in the position of another like how they were in egypt there's literally video evidence of going into different tombs and pier like pyramids that have hieroglyphics right and they'll paint over like they'll literally paint the black reddish black people and they'll make them white like they'll literally color it over and make the so they're trying to like paint themselves into certain history and stuff like that. That's literally what reptilians do. I'm even gonna show a music video that I'm just gonna type in so I don't forget. Um, and it's about it's also based off of the movie The Knowing, which is about the end of the world and about all this kind of stuff too. So basically, um. But what that means is a lot of the stuff that we, um, and yeah, all rights go to the weekend and, um, everyone affiliated with that, but I'm going to play this in a minute, I'm not going to play it yet. I'm not even going to play the sound, it's irrelevant. So, well, the sound at the beginning is kind of relevant, but it's in a part, so 90% of you will not, 99% of you will not get it, but, um, if you do, just go watch the video on your own after, but when it comes to these reptilians, like, for example, the Bible, the first Bible in the world, like, I've been explaining it all the time, like, this is not their religion. When it comes to Christianity and all that type of stuff, like, it's just not their religion. They took it over it. Like, that's why Freemason, Freemasons isn't even their kind of thing. Like, like uh, it came from the original Masons. That's why they're Freemasons. They're trying to be free of, like, basically matriarchal energy. Like, they're, they're not essentially... Um, they're not who they say they are. Like that's why the Jews who say they, the Jews who say they are, are basically not. They are the synagogue of Satan, right? Like that's why it says that in the Bible as well. So the ten, the oldest Bible in the world is right here. It's in Ethiopia, it's called the Gurim Gospels. But it's literally, like Ethiopia Bible is the oldest and most complete on earth. So all the uh, books that they took out of the Bible was never taken out of the Ethiopian Bible, and this is the oldest one on the earth. This is from like, 
Let's see. This is from four, they say from 494 AD. So if this is from 494 AD, and the oldest like Hebrew Bible is like a few hundred years after that, or even almost a thousand years after that, from the, um, the lexicon strong, that tells you something. And I already made a lot of connections between the Hebrew Bible and the Ethiopian, or the Hebrew religion and the Ethiopian, um, sorry, the Hebrew language and the Ethiopian language, which again, I'm doing a language video, so I'll talk about that more there. But all these cultures, all these religions, like it's all stolen, like a lot of these things, like it, they just painted themselves and again, I'm going to do a whitewashing of history video, so I'm just going to explain a lot in that video about this stuff. So I don't want to get lost in this because this is uh, a long talk of what I'm getting into right here. So when it comes down to um, this reptilian thing, the point is, all like they've painted over themselves in all of history, whether it be anywhere in the world, whether it be Buddhism, Hinduism, like all these different gods basically, or religions and everything around the world are all melanated in that. You can... You, you can figure this out so simply. Whatever religion you want, just type in black after it and you'll see the original images of when before they were painted and then the newer ones are always the lighter versions of it. And this is no shot at whatever race and all that kind of stuff because there's a reason why they're connected to all these types of things. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And then when it comes to um, past just the religions too, like, and being, like, native to, like, every location on the planet, and, like, all these types of things. There's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into that. So, they've basically painted themselves into all these different mythologies and all these different stories, and then they've, they've drained the energy out of all these different stories one by, these civilizations one by one, and harnessed everything they could and took everything they could, and then they basically merged it together and then added to their own society and things like that, right? So, before I get into the core of this video... So when it, when it gets into the whole finite resource and infinite resource type of concept, what happens is after you drain the energy of a planet, you move on to a next one and you just keep you keep it going. And what happens is with this concept, I, re, I explained a lot of this in the clone age, the cloning video, so just you should go watch that. But essentially, uh, like I go into way more detail. But essentially, with immortality, what happens is when you reach that goal of being immortal, you can't give that to everybody. Like it becomes that immortality itself becomes a finite resource because if 9 billion people were running around the, or 7 billion or 8 billion, however many people are on this planet, were running around with immort immortality, it's just, it wouldn't work because we would all, if we all had the ability to basically live forever, we basically try to keep ascending, um, especially with the way people are right now in a, um, in a physical way, like, it, it has to do with physicality and all this type of stuff, like the way how it, how it's set right now. But the main difference between the two, the Anunnaki and Neturu, is like the idea of a soul. So when it comes to these beings, like if you have an eternal soul, death is not the end. It's just it's just you, you keep coming back at different bodies and things like that. It's not really a big deal, to be honest. But when it comes to beings like this, and it has to do with being soulless and when you don't have one you have to stay in the same physical body because if you lose that physical shell you're you're gone for good after that basically like a lot of these beings so a lot of movies are showing this concept so what i'll do is i'm gonna i'm gonna go into i'm gonna explain this a little bit better but and they're also called skinwalkers these shapeshifters and and stuff like that but i'm gonna go into the stuff about the vatican but I'm going to show you some stuff about Star Wars, and I'm going to show you some stuff about other things, too, as well, and, and vampires, and uh, School of Tehuti, and things like that, because all these things are very interconnected, and even Lord of the Rings with the orcs and all that, but I don't, I'm not going to go into Lord of the Rings in this one, because Lord, that would make it way too long. So, with this infinite resource, like, the way you got to look at it is, like, why would you have a clone? This I talked about this in a cloning video. What's the point of having a clone, and, like, so on, and... A lot of these clones and things like that and people who die and everyone's like, oh, he didn't actually die, like it was a fake thing, like all this type of stuff. The reason that's even relevant is because, like, basically there's like a tryout to be, you have to say there's like a tryout to be part of this breakaway immortal civilization. To be a part of that, to even be like considered to try out to even be immortal, even if you were in the civilization, which has to do with different immortal secret societies. 
of different groups of people. So there's different immortal societies based off different groups of people, based off religion. There's a bunch of different immortal societies and all this type of stuff. So and they all come together and form a whole. So at the, like a, a, a collective whole. So like at the end of the day, like when you like to become part of one of these societies, you can't be a part of the regular society anymore. So you have to basically do your final play. Like you have to do your final movie, your final act. You have to get out of this society and usually that's through death so people you know aren't worried about you anymore and then you can go begin your you could say a mortal life of because if all the resources are drained they took it and they're using it for a separate civilization that exists within our civilization so that that's where a lot of the fake deaths come in and the cloning and all this type of stuff once you reach a certain type of wealth and all this type of stuff you can basically become a part of that and it goes a lot to do it has a lot to do with the destruction like when the planet gets destroyed and how the energies will come after different beings and like all this type of stuff they're trying to avoid um what's coming and it like they're pretty much pros at this stuff at the, <laughs> or they wouldn't be able to do this to multiple different locations right so when it comes to the inner earth and hollow earth and all these types of stuff so even like in naruto that otsuki clan all the people that showed you the majority of them are inside the earth in the show they all stay inside the earth. They have inners and outers, and the outers are sleeper agents that work for the people on that inner, which are, you know, the agents that we see on the outside. So that obviously relates to elites and secret societies inside the earth. And then when it talks about reptilians, the reptilians were cast in the Bible when it says Satan was cast into the earth. Like, that would mean inside of the earth. So if you want to look at it as like a group of, if you don't want to look at it as one individual, or it doesn't even matter, if you want to look at one individual or a group of reptilians, either one, was cast into the earth so that means and he was here before humans and then basically him and his fallen angels had to serve humans and then they weren't cool of, cool with that so that's why they fell and then essentially they were cast into the earth so hundreds of them satan and 200 fallen angels now these are all the same concepts of being beings within the inner earth controlling things on the outer using agents and things like that now people like him and like these are big agents but then it goes into that whole freemasonic pyramid which has to do with the illuminati so basically it would be like on the bottom you would have greek organizations which are fraternities i don't know even like mcdonald's and companies and anything part of the roman empire right now after that like if you're imagining this in a pyramid that's the bottom level the next level would be freemasons that are controlling um that are utilizing the greek organizations now above that would be the elites who are the rich that are essentially trying to get into that civilization but they're um they're going through the motions essentially to lose their humanity and uh become part of that now on top of that you could say it's the illuminati which is the capstone of the pyramid right you could even say they're not even in the pyramid but they're basically that all-seeing eye that caps door on like the eye in lord of the rings and the tower and stuff like that you know even in that Otusuki clan, like you saw the one woman with the eye in the middle of her forehead. It, it's not the pineal gland is bad, but they're, it's the, they know, they have high tech technology. That's the easiest way to put it. Now, when it comes down to it, uh, that's really what's going on for the most part, depending on, and regardless of what people are doing and stuff like that, it's just, that's really what's going on. So when you look at it on another sense with, um, Star Wars, for example, I'm going to, I'm going to jump back and forth with Star Wars, but when you see the clone troopers, right, the clone troopers are carbon copies of, um, Jango Fett and, uh, is it Jango Fett or Boba Fett? One of the two. And, um, they're clone, they're carbon copies, car copies of melanin, essentially. Now, when you look at the Pope and, you know, all that color, the coloring, it has to do with that adrenochrome. And if you don't know about that, you just I'm not even gonna talk well actually I will talk about adrenochrome because adrenochrome has to do with like again with just suck, putting someone at a peak level of fear whether it be it could be through so many different things and then draining the 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 actual adrenochrome is like a liquid and draining it at the time where people are at that peak amount of fear because they produce the amount most of it now when you drink that like it they, uh, for them, I'm assuming it just has to do with immortality. I'll just put it that simply. And it's part of certain rituals as well. Now, it starts to do shit like that. So when you see, like, um, the Rothschilds and all these types of people who have this type of bruising and all that stuff, that's from adrenochrome and all that type of stuff. It's kind of like the same thing with vampires and blood drinking, right? So when you got, like, 
like they obviously look pretty similar. <laughs> now when you got um this is like someone who's just ODing off adrenochrome basically. Now uh when you look at Star Wars they're they're the Sith it goes to the dark side and they're basically draining the energy of the galaxy essentially and that's pretty much what they're doing now. If you look at Star Wars originally there was a republic and then that republic got taken over by the Sith. So there was a good order of the Jedi. And now this is why I talk about the Jedi, because the Jedi, when you talk about the word Jed, the word Jed, Jedi comes from Egypt. The Jed is um, this pillar, and e this this pillar, like this, um, it's like an obelisk, it also relates to your spine, which has to do with Kundalini energy as well, but it relates to your spine. It usually relates with the Ankh and the Wasp scepter, and then the uh, Pope is usually holding pretty much those. Uh, in one way or another and this is basically also a battery and it's an electrical conduit like it's multiple different things at once so they have this ceremony called raising the jed right and it's to, in egypt and it's um basically um it has to do with uh it has to do with energy and power and like lighting up their you could say their cities and stuff like that and this goes into quantum physics and stuff like that understanding this pillar because it can produce it's like a it can it can produce if you if you know how to build it and all these types of things correctly, it, it can it can power different things. People have created like their own version of jets that can power different things. It has to do with the granite and the limestone, uh, not the limestone, sorry, granite and the um, what's it called basalt and um, certain things. And even that word basalt, keep in mind. So now um, now jet right. So when you see uh, now keep keep this in mind. This is literally the base of a lightsaber. When you see, when you see the, like, if you imagine like the, literally the lightsaber part coming out of that, this is the this is the handle part of a lightsaber. So, essentially, that's what a jet is right there. So it, it does more than one thing. Now that's a jet. That's a lightsaber. That's a jet. Now, Jedi has to do with the order of Tehuti. Tehuti is Thoth, right? This is wordly worded where Jedi came from. So, Tehuti is, is Thoth, and Jehu you spell it like this. Originally, I, I understand you spell it like they didn't have vowels. I understand originally you actually spell it like um, something like that. Dot, but it means. King, it means David in my in in the, in our language in um, in Amharic and stuff like that. But I'm not gonna get into that right now. So, well, actually, I will get into that soon. But um, so this has to do with the order of the Jedi. Now, keep this in mind. I'm gonna build on the Star Wars thing with uh, the Tahuti thing, but I don't want to get too far in the Tahuti thing yet because I want to go. I'll, I'll go more into the Star Wars and the Egyptian stuff in a second, but. First, I want to build on the vampires and the Vatican and get that topic over with, and then I'll go into the Star Wars concept. So, the clone troopers relate to uh, a lot of the reptilian um, Anunnaki cloning projects and these types of things. But again, I'm going to go into the vampire thing and then I'll come back. So, when it gets into... Um, hold on. Okay. So, let's go here. Okay, so a basilisk is a mythical reptile with a legal gaze um, or breath hatched by a serpent from a cock's egg. Okay, so, a basilisk. This is a basilisk, okay? This is what it's modeled after. So, well, this is why I also said keep the word bas basalt in mind. Now, a basilisk, um, Regulus, the star Regulus, which is um, one of the fixed stars that represent one of the four archangels in astrology. Now, or the four cardinal points, but it, like it represents one of the four archangels, right? Now, Regulus has to do with the archangel Raphael. Now, um, actually, I'm sorry, one thing I also want to mention real quick is... Um, they stole this from Ethiopia. Like, if when I said the good guys, so there's a good order of the Jedi and then a bad one. The good one has to do with Ethiopia, which I'll just, I will prove in a minute. 
but I just have to finish that thought. But. Okay, so you guys should, a lot of you should know about this stuff, but if you don't, then you don't. So, the Vatican is a separate uh, entity from Rome. It's not even, like, one with Rome. And there's also another separate entity within the within Washington as well, because that's, like, a new Rome. So, I forget exactly what, the, what it's called in Washington. If I can figure it out by the end of this video, if I can remember it, then I'll mention it a bit. It's actually kind of important, but it's not really too important for this video, so... Um, oh, the di is it the, I think it's the District of Columbia. I think it's called the District of Columbia. So, okay, Rome is a separate... Rome and the Vatican are a separate entity, and this is basically how they can, like, divide um, religion and the state, but they can also divide responsibility. So, the, um, the Vatican itself is, um, like, the Pope is the king, the religious head, like the priest, the high priest, or like the uh, voice of God, essentially, and the president. He's all three at the same time. He sits in the holy seat, which is like the throne that basically God speaks to him through, <laughs> according to him. And, um, yeah, so he's essentially the president, the like the voice of God, and the... Uh, the king, all at the same time. So he has the scepter, the sword, and like um, the cross all at the same time, which has to do with that wasp scepter um, that I was showing before. It has to do with that wasp scepter right there, the jed, and the ankh. The ankh being the, the cross at that point. Um, so, now, in the Vatican, he makes the, the laws he also, he basically, is just, it's a dictatorship. It's just the simplest way to put it. If you want to learn more about that, you can learn more about that. I'm not going to teach too much about that. Now, this is called the Basilisk, basically. Like, when I'm showing the, ba well, the, ba the Basilica, which is obviously is pretty much the same word as Basilisk. It's obviously connected for a certain reason. So, Basilica, when you look at this from an aerial view, I don't know if you're seeing it, but you see the crown on the head of him, right? Because... Regulus, in, there's another word for Regulus, which is Basilisk, which is basically the little, it means little king, or like reptile king. And that, um, so you can see the little crown on the top of his head, right, like this thing. It's like the crown I'm talking about. So, this is literally lined up with the star of Regulus to harness the energy. It's perfectly lined up. This is the crown right there of, of this guy. That crown right there, that's the crown. And you see the two eyes right there, and then you see the nose, right? You see the nose sticking out like that. So there was a guy who drew this one time, but I can't find that picture. Now, you also see an upside-down cross right here. Literally an upside-down cross. He has the crown, he has the two eyes, upside-down cross. If you see this from a front view, you'd also get a good image of the face. But a lot of this is hidden in plain sight. Now, this is the body, too. So it has like these spikes and stuff like that, and then it has the hands and all that, and like the tail, right? So it's like the tail, the arms go out, and then there's like the, essentially the leg. It, it's easier if you draw it out, but you get the point from just seeing the head of it, right? Now, that's just a simple one. Now, this is lined up perfectly with the Star Regulus. And then these are also perfectly lined up with the pyramids of Giza and other places on the planet. So it's literally siphoning the energy from the natural things that melanated people created around the planet. And it's siphoning, like these are siphoning the energies and all these types of things for whatever purposes they need. Now, that's just the, bas the basilica. That's, that's like a light version of it. Now, uh, and then you can see this five-star pentagram and like, there, there's a bunch of shit going on in, in, in the Vatican, I'll just say that. Um, now, that's the Basilisk and all that, right? Now, there's something called the Vatican Auditorium Hall, and it was constructed and, do and donated, on, it was constructed on land donated by the Knights of Columbus. So, the Knights of Columbus, if you've seen the, the show The Order on Netflix, it's ver there's werewolves in it, right? And historically, werewolves and vampires have always been fighting, right? Now, it's also important to know, because skinwalkers are known as werewolves. Now, um, basically shapeshifters. So, werewolves in the show, in the order, 
are part of the because they're they're secret orders and if you don't know the show about the order it's basically this guy goes to college and he's trying to bring down this order and the it's a secret order that you get into it, it like basically in the university you it's like a frat but then it's like a secret society that's an order and then in that order they have um you learn about like witchcraft and all this magic shit right and then there's also another secret society that's like really just not known of too much at all they're less known than the order i guess but they're equally a secret which are called the knights of christopher columbus and those are werewolves in the show so just that connection alone is already big enough and the fact that it was you can say and then they team up eventually in the show so the fact that it's just showing you a lot right there now you can see in the auditorium hall that looks like a freaking snake if you can't see that then i don't know what to tell you but i'll show you <laughs> so oh, excuse me man. so you can see the eyes you can see the teeth you can see the head it's like the scales pretty easy to see like they're all inside of the mouth of the serpent so it's basically they're metaphorically they're basically getting eaten energetically and then he's like he's the voice of the serpent because that's where the tongue comes out right and yeah it's just this is shit that you should be able to understand and then from the outside point of view you can see this is the same auditorium hall from the outside so you can clearly see the eye you can see how the head is literally the same shape as in pretty much all serpents and then the front which is like the nose right it's literally the head of a serpent and then from an aerial view which i'll see if i can get it um i just want to see if there's more yeah I'll show you this in a second, that's coming nice. Now, I guess this is an aerial view. You can see the, like, you can see the scales, but I wanted, like, a longer view to see if there's, like, a body attached to it. I'll go up that silica again. They have this pine tree thing, which is all over the area and stuff like that. Got some weird ass shit going on here. And then you wonder why all these people, these, these people get caught with like all these pedophilia things and like, they're not about to marry and they all wear these weird outfits and shit like that. So, I'm not going to show this part again, but just keep in mind that you can easily see that right here. Essentially, it's a serpent. It's a serpent. The body is pretty much underground, but it's essentially, it, like, it's perfectly lined up. And it's right beside the basilica, as you can see. This is the basilica right here. There's that crown or whatever. This is the upside down. Or, sorry, this is the crown. This is that upside down cross. It's literally right next to it. <laughs> so, we can only imagine how many, what all the other buildings are like over there, right? Now, these guys are dressed like pretty much this one. Okay, but you get the point. Now, real quickly, see if I can. I want to see if I can get a better area of view. Okay, so you can see. It was created like it wasn't created long ago either. So it's new because they had to rebuild it and stuff like that. But. And the guy who built it is literally known, as weird as this is, he is literally known for reptilian architecture, for making buildings with reptilian different features in it. But yeah, this whole um, aspect, part of this whole, it's basically right in the middle of Rome, and it's just this whole part of sectioned off to the, the Pope, and it's 500 people that are allowed citizenship, which the majority of that. I don't know if it's the majority or if every single citizen of the Vatican is male in some homosexual culture, but either way. Um, there's that building, and then the Vatican Hall is right here. Yeah, no, the Vatican's bigger than just uh, just this part, because here's the auditorium hall right here. And this is the auditorium hall, meaning the audit auditorium, auditory. It's the, it's the hall where he speaks, the Pope speaks. There's not one single 
Christian and like we're talking about this is the Catholic Pope. Yeah, this is the Catholic Pope we're still talking about. So it's kind of strange how when you search this entire auditorium hall and all the photos, there isn't single there isn't one single cross in here. There's not one image of Jesus. There's not one single image of anything biblical in here. It's just this giant serpent that you're just sitting in and you just have to act like it's home. <laughs> so all this like Renaissance art and other stuff they have all over like you know, all over. They have nothing that represents Jesus. They have one thing which I'm going to end on for this topic and then go into the Tahuti, um, the other stuff, right? But, yeah, which I'll get into this, but they don't have any religious type of symbology except this. So the only thing they have in there, and I hope this was clear, the audio because man I'm trying to make I'm putting out good information for this video the fractal the mysticism video all these videos and this is like the these are the videos that get interfered with electronically when I literally I got a brand new mic doesn't work properly use the old mic doesn't work properly download software like all this type of stuff it's just this doesn't make any sense if I talk about it on the supernatural level it makes perfect sense I don't even care about getting into that um, so this is the only thing that's even, you could say, related to <laughs> the Bible or anything in, in this auditorium hall. So, I don't know how these guys are going to defend them in the sphere, like, it's just, I don't know, that's just probably the ceremonial, but... So, basically, there's a statue of Jesus. This is, like, weighs, I don't know how many tons, like, 50 tons or something like that. This whole statue weighs, like, a lot. Now, these are all bones. These are all bones of people, like not actual physical bones, but they are literally, they're images of bones and stuff like that. I don't know what this is made out of, but these, these are literally bones and like skull and bones of different people and stuff like that. Because what the Vatican claimed out of their own, like what their own public official record of this is, this is Jesus Christ rising out of a nuclear apocalypse. This is Jesus with his face blown in half. I'll get better images of that. He has one wing. It's like a demonic looking wing. He only has one wing. And he's missing half his wing. He's missing like half of his face, half of his body. And he's coming out of a nuclear explosion. Because that's where they think the rising of Jesus basically will come from. Now, and all these people are getting killed. And then he's rising out of the ashes. So that is not very... Christian or Catholic, as you can obviously tell, like, this is, like, just clearly on some evil shit, so, um, uh, and I'm gonna go into the vampire part of this video, and then the security part, because it's all connected. So, Face is blown in half. Um, yeah, this is just not any way to represent physical anything, you know, like this is just this is literally like people be like, oh, you're not supposed to have any crazy image of um, of the Lord, and like, maybe that's why there's no cross. Well, graven doesn't mean cross, like, that's not, the cross is literally a letter, letter in the Hebrew alphabet, that's not a graven image, it's literally a letter. So, <laughs> it doesn't, it, it's more than that. And then, this is a graven image. <laughs> this is the definition. Well, what the hell? Okay, well, yeah, my mic just, <laughs> as I talk to it about my mic, my mic shut off on me, which makes no sense, because it's plugged in and not using battery, so, actually here, I'm just going to pause this and see if this is even working, because I don't want to talk. Yeah, okay, that's good, but, sad thing is, it's still doing all that bullshit where it's buzzing and all of that. Like that static, which again, I'm not even gonna get into that. <laughs> it's just, it's just some bullshit. So, 
if you want the information, you're just gonna have to, I guess, force your way through the the interference, you know. So, uh, I lost my train of thought. But either way, this is a graven this is a graven image. This is a obviously the definition of a graven image, like. This is not any way you're supposed to, like, if you're a Catholic or a Christian or whatever, you obviously do not depict Jesus with coming out of the ashes of millions of people while he's half blown away with half, with one wing, and he's like, it's just messed up. So, yeah, that's the Vatican part of it. I'm, I'm going to tie more about the Pope in as we go. So, I'm going to show... Mm. I don't know if I need to actually show this music video anymore. There's any part. It's a pretty important music video that it's a pretty important music video, so I suggest you watch it on your own. I actually don't think you need I need to post it or show you. But yeah. It's an important video, so I think you guys should just check it out on your own. But um, it's annoying the weekend, right? So, uh, what was I going to say? The, uh, yeah, so this is basically has a lot to do with Ethiopia and, uh, and, and Rome, because there's a reason why Rome has been basically in love with Ethiopia. They attacked us in World War One. They attacked us in Italy, attacked in World War One. Italy attacked in World War Two. They've been doing all this stupid shit for 2,000 years, literally 2,000 years with Ethiopia, and we just keep killing them, so there's, there's a reason for that. Now, like, for example, like, actually, I don't, I don't need to show this stuff, like, when I, uh, I'll maybe do a video about Ethiopia and certain stuff, but that's not even, oh, excuse me, that's not, um, important to what I'm about to get into, into. so, when we talk about vampires, so, just the common, like, vampires have been hypersexualized to be this weird gothic, like, bite you in the neck in a sexual way, and, like, we wear all black, and, like, well, not me, obviously, but we wear all black, um, I don't know, it's like a hypersexualized, we wear tight leather, black, and all this stuff, and it's just kind of hypersexualized, but when you see a vampire, like, I mean, that's more accurate, I guess, you get these, like, albino, things that don't have life force, so they have to drain it from other people, right? Now, um, oh, that's not an image I want to play. <laughs> um, now, at one point, you could say vampires had wings, and especially in a lot of, um, different stories. So, a vampire with wings, Nah, I'm getting stupid images, but obviously it has to do with vampire baths and stuff like that too, and being blind, and it's all tied together, and it's tied with cavemen and Neanderthals, like all these are tied together, but when you see something like this, a vampire with wings, right? Oh, Shadow 63 Joey, by the way, with the vampire and werewolf video, but, um, when you see this vampire with, like, wings and stuff like that, that, if it doesn't remind you of a gargoyle, like, this should definitely remind you of a carb oil. Like they look pretty much the, they're the exact same thing. Like a vampire with wings is basically a gargoyle, so and these are all important why I'm getting into this. So a vampire with wings essentially is just like a leveled up vampire. It has to do with that dragon again. Now this is like a shitty version of a dragon, but still, it's like on, on its way. Now, even the movie Jupiter Rising has like a bunch of... They have the, basically the gargoyle vampire kind of creatures, and then they also have these like wolf-like creatures too. So it's talking about this, this concept of werewolves and vampires again. So, but they're still on the same team regardless. They just are different levels of the same team. <laughs> one you could say is like a royal knight, and the other one is like more of a... I don't know. Um, a lesser knight. <laughs> it's like a, they're the same guy basically. So, I'm just gonna keep on the image because they're good enough to get the point across of what I'm trying to get at. So, 
on that cathedral. You remember that one cathedral that burned down in France? And I got to shout out this guy because I saw this in this video. You could easily, Vincent Rose, you can easily find these videos and stuff. But I, yeah, let's start that out a little bit. But shout out Vincent Rose, you can easily check his channel and find his videos. He was talking about this cathedral in France, the one that burned down, and he raised like a billion dollars for it in like one night. Literally, like a like billion dollars. And what they did is they built all these gargoyles and took them all over the church um, in that same night like when they rebuilt it. So they just threw all these gargoyles in. So 13, they put these gargoyles in there. And this is just like a I don't know what to call that. Now, <laughs> okay, got that to me. Even though we're too good. These gargoyles are these gargoyles. There, there's something, you know. You you get the point. I'm just gonna leave on this guy for a while. So, um, vampire with wings, gargoyle, demon. Now, when you get to the school of Takuti, I hope y'all can hear me through this part. So, well, I hope you can hear me throughout the whole thing. Now. I've already I'm gonna explain this one more time because I've done it in, in the mysticism video. Um, I don't really think I don't know why I'm blanking on how to search this, but okay. So when you side two get one for you, so. Some of the sacred colors of Tahuti is gold and blue, okay? When you get into gold and blue, there is essentially, um, it's the sacred colors of Tahuti, like, sorry, I got lost for a second. <laughs> it's the sacred colors of Tahuti, right? The Tahuti. So, I don't want to explain this too much, because um, I proved a lot of stuff in, in, in my mysticism video about this, but, this has to do with the school of Tahuti, in a way. Now, the square, when you have a square that's so 4 90 degree angles, that's 360 degrees. When you have a compass, a compass is a tool to draw a perfect circle. So a circle is 360 degrees. You get 360 plus 360 equals 720 degrees, okay? 720 degrees. So Freemasonry is run by me. Like, they're connected to Masons, but not like the... You could say it's not the original Mason, but it's connected to they have higher than thirty-three degree knowledge like than everybody like everybody thinks. It definitely goes higher than that. So they always depict Tahuti holding a star tetrahedron. You see what he's holding right here, and it's even that blue color. So okay. You see that star tetrahedron, I don't need to go into it, but you see the star and the triangle and the triangle, okay? He's holding it. Now, the triangle and the triangle. This is a star tetrahedron as well, just in a, just graphically represented slightly different, okay? Now, Tehuti is also the god of basically a lot of the things that deals with a square and a compass, whether it be geometry, math, his wife of Ma'at, which is literally pretty much the word math, and like, it just, Tehuti goes into a lot of this. So, there was two priesthoods mainly. There was the priesthood of Aaron, and some people call it the Aryan priesthood in Gnosticism and different things, like, well, not really Gnosticism, but in different things, they call it, sometimes they might call it the Aryan priesthood, but I'll get into that in a minute. There's the priesthood of Anubis, or Anpu, and there's the priesthood of Tehuti. The priesthood of Tehuti is the Order of the Jedi, okay? The Order of Jedi. The Order of Jakuti. The Freemasons are in the Order, and then they have... In Star Wars, they have the Grand Master. They're the Grand Jedi, the Grand Master Jedi, and they, they, since they have the Grand, like the Grand, uh, the Grand Master, and like the, the Lodge, right? And the Great, like the... It's the same, it's the same title. And they're both in the in different orders. So the order, of, the order of Jehuti, Jehuti, is the order of the Jedi. Jehuti Jedi. 
Chihuti Jedi. You can clearly see the phonetic link. Now, in the Bible, there is the priesthood of Melchizedek and the priesthood of Aaron. Now, in Freemasonry, there's also two pillars. There's Okay, free, and this is all over the Anunnaki imagery that I was showing you before. They have a lot of this stuff with the Kabbalah tree of life inside the middle, so the checkerboard, there's a lot of symbolism I can decode, I don't really care for the most part right now. So usually there's the elliptical over top of this, but you could say it's about astrology as well. So there's two pillars, or two priesthoods. When these two number ones where the number 11, which is, a, which is a master number in Freemasonry, if the pillars were to fall onto each other, they would form a triangle, like this. This is one pillar, one pillar. If this pillar fell over and this pillar fell over, it would literally be this exact triangle, okay? So, I've explained this before. Now in Egypt, when you see the pharaoh and have the... Um, the falcon and the snake on the head, on the on the on the headdress, right? And that's if you don't know, Pharaoh head dress. And this is just I just have an easy understanding of knowing certain things, especially with this stuff. And I've already explained it. I'll explain it one more time too. But you clearly see the serpent. And the well, sorry, the, e the vulture or the falcon and the and the serpent. Okay, see it right there. Now, the serpent has to do with a lot of the serpent shit I was talking at the beginning. The serpent is bound to its belly. You know when you say you came from the mud and all that sort of stuff. That means you experience something firsthand. You have to live through it, right? And when you have to live through something firsthand, like you have a real life ex experience of it, like you. You are that, like, you, you really went through whatever it was. You have experience of it. Now, when you... Okay, yeah, there we go. So, the snake is bound to the ground after it lost its wings and all that shit, right? It's bound to the ground. It has to stay on the ground right here. Like, it, you can't... You can't, like, fly up here and stuff like that, right? It's bound to the ground. This represents the earth. This represents heaven, okay? So the snake, after it goes through all this experience and it rises, it's basically at this, um, you could say, it, it, it rises to this heavenly point almost. So it went through a full circle experience basically, and what happens is, once it reaches this pinnacle where it's like standing as like a cobra, right, and it's up here, what happens like, as a person like goes through a full real life experience, that's a 360 degree circle. So like your astrology circle, like you've gone through your life purpose or whatever, you experience what you're supposed to experience, you can come back and teach people to, to teach people about it. So the teachers have to do with the vulture and the, the bird. So the bird symbolizes the messenger or the angel, right? And they give you messages based off of whatever from a they have a bird's eye point of view and they come down to earth to teach you something. That's what 720 degree knowledge also represents on the pharaoh head, head when it had those two things. That's also what it represents. So, serpent has gained wisdom, right? The serpent taught Eve with wisdom and all that shit, right? And she Eve, like whispered in her ear and all that shit, right? So she taught serpent taught stuff. Once it got to this level of like having that wisdom, it was able to teach. Now the the bird basically comes back down and teaches that and gives you in, in the form of messages. So it's they're tied together. That's what that 720 degree has to do with. So when you look at the number five, there's a half square and a half circle, as you can see. Time, it has to do with the, it has to do with time. It has to do with experience and it has to do with um, essentially time and experience. There's ways to look at it with CP mathematics and all that shit. That is, it's the same thing essentially. It's also the word five, 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 you know, like five, so five, and then you know when like in fraternities they always have that phi in there, uh, like alpha, beta, phi, or whatever fraternity, right? So phi represents the, phi is literally, 
the sequence for the Fibonacci spiral. I've put this all in the mysticism video too. It's the golden ratio. The golden ratio is the Fibonacci spiral, okay? It's also a Greek letter. Yeah, phi is how you represent the Fibonacci spiral. The Fibonacci spiral in the mathematical representation is, a, like these are all the prime numbers, but essentially it goes in the pa this pattern that it's following, this never ending pattern, goes back to the golden ratio. And this is how all pyramids, everything was built, sacred geometry. It has to do with all the sacred geometry. And that sacred geometry has to do with phi. Now, um, phi has to do with phi. And you can see this, this half circle and the half square, which relates to the square, the half square right here, and the half circle right here, the square and the compass. So, you're basically saying, and this has to do with grand architect, essentially. So, or god as well, but grand architect relates to god, the archon and stuff, like the grand architect. The, the Grand Architect, the Grand Archon is known as Metatron sometimes, like the Angel Metatron, and they relate Metatron to Trinity, so there's a reason why they're all correlated to each other. Now, that's what the Grand Archon is. Now, the priesthood of Aaron and Melchizedek, like Jesus, for example, is in the priesthood of Melchizedek, that's what it says in the Bible, and the way he died and on the cross, even though it doesn't specifically say if he died, it kind of says his soul transcended in a way, and when you read it, especially in like the original language, it doesn't especially say die. It kind of means die, but it's not. You, you, it, it doesn't have to be interpreted as die. It doesn't directly say the word die, but it doesn't. You, you can, because the way that falcon was over his body, you can just say his spirit split from his body and then went into that bird, and then when his body was moved, he put his physical, he put his spiritual and solar essence back into his body, and then that's how he was able to like essentially do what he did. It was like it was not really. I don't really want to call it a magic trick, but. You can look at it in that way, and that's why when you say pull up Houdini, and when you see the word Tehuti, you hear that word Hu, which is that owl, right? So that owl, that Hu, that Hu sound relates to that owl. So when you say pull up Houdini, he faked his own death. And like, I'm not saying Jesus faked his own death, but he actually did die, his body was dead, right? But like, there's a reason why these things are all tied together, I'm saying. And I'm not saying like they're all part of the same order, right? But, it, well, I'm saying most of them are, except for maybe Jesus, but... Well, I don't really want to use the word Jesus, but Yahweh, right? Or y Yahshua. So now, essentially, these are all extremely tied together, as you can tell. Now, the priesthood of Aaron, again, my name is Aaron, right? So, like, this is easily why I can tap into this energy of the Freemason shit, because it's super easy for me to understand. I showed a pendant that I have, that, is, that my name is on there. Now, the way you write my, the R-O in my language, Ro, the way you make that sound in my language, it basically looks like a, it looks like the number nine, but if you mirrored this and it was facing backwards, like the nine was facing this way, and essentially that number nine is that Fibonacci spiral, and the G is literally the Fibonacci spiral. In the mysticism video, I drew it out and I showed the picture and everything, so you're gonna have to go, you're gonna have to take my word for it right now, but you can go into the mysticism video and kind of just scroll through and find that section where I show you the part, because this is clearly the letter A. And this is also clearly the letter A. That's A A. And if this means also that if this is phonetically, you can connect the symbols to be the same thing as the G and the R O. The G and the R O being the same, so A A R O. Usually, this is either blue in the background or black in the background to symbolize the waters. The waters is also known as in one in one in Egyptian form a certain form of noon. So when you know how to speak with symbolism, you know how to read certain things. So this literally just says my name. And I'm not saying this is about me personally, but I'm saying the fact that I have that name it lets me tap into understanding things like this super easy. Because essentially this is, you could say, the priesthood of Aaron, because Moses was in the priesthood of Melchizedek, and Aaron and Moses were brothers. So, And then a lot of times M Moses is related to Tehuti, and like, certain Rastafaris and certain people can make that um, argument very well. And then Anubis, a lot of times, be related to Aaron. Now... When you see that priesthood of Anubis and that priesthood of Aaron and then that priesthood of Tehudi and that priesthood of Melchizedek or the, and Moses and Jesus and well, Yahshua was all part of it. Now, they're all part of one tribe, right? Being Judah, right? And Judah, also the word Buddha is obviously related to Judah, but Yehuda, Yehuda, 
Tehuti Yehuda. Now, before I even get in more into that, Yehuda, and then Ethiopia, the tribe of Yehuda, right? Like, or the um, the line of Judah, right? The line of Yehuda. Now, the lion again, wearing the crown. Originally, like when you see the Ethiopian flag, it's the lion wearing the crown, and like I said, the basilisk, like the the perverted version in Rome, is like that little reptile guy like it means little king and it means like the reptile crowned or whatever so essentially they perverted and regulus is in the constellation of leo which is has to obviously do with the lion right so it's basically been perverted down from ethiopia to rome and there's like a perversion of a lot of things now and they're not one in the same they're literally like they're they're, <laughs> they're they're really closely connected but like i said they they're it's a chameleon they know how to take they know how to take your shit and then flip it, basically. That's the easiest way to put it. Now, yeah, Yehuda, Ju like Judah, Judah, Jedi, Judah, Jedi. Buddhism, obviously, is related to the order of the Jedi and what they do in there. And I've already showed people this before as well. Because I've already proven multiple times how the Ethiopian language is connected to... Um, Hebrew, and how Hebrew is just a newer dialect, you could say, of the Ethiopian language. So even the word teru in, in Japanese means to shine, and in Hebrew is the word or in Hebrew is the word tura. It's like they they have all the they have a lot of the same words between Japanese and Hebrew, as you can clearly see. And uh, just to show you quickly, and I guess this is in Japan. You got the Star of David. <laughs> um, what I was going to show is how the Japanese language is clearly tied to the Hebrew language. This is just self-explanatory. This is easy shit to, to understand. Excuse me, I'm going to have to save this. <laughs> I'm going to use this later, I forgot. Okay. So, you can clearly see the letters are pretty much identical, for how they do things. And this all comes from Ethiopia, again, like I can explain later, in the language video, and in the whitewashing of history video. But i got to figure out this mic shit. I don't think I'm gonna, there's anything I can do, but I'll figure out something. So, either way, when it comes down to it, language and culture are intrinsically tied. Now, in Japan... There's Buddhism and Shintoism, which has to do with, like, a lot of... There's a reason why, like, a lot of black people like to watch anime and all that stuff, because the culture comes from us, essentially. Like, it's the same culture. Now, this Freemason stuff, like, again, stuff is super tied to, like, a lot of stuff. I'm person Like, I personally know, and I'm definitely not a Mason, by the way, but <laughs> it's personally tied to a lot of stuff I know, and it's just easy for me to understand this stuff, like, to physically understand it. Because, um... So now when you talk about the build, the builder that the stone, um, or the stone that the builder refused, right? I was talking about the priesthood of Melchizedek, and the only reason you would refuse a stone is because it's raw. So, like, let's say if you're building a house and you have a bunch of bricks, right? You're going to want a brick that's perfectly, like, it's rectangular and all this stuff, right? But if you have, like, a stone that doesn't fit into the spot to build with because it's raw and you haven't refined it to be shapely, you're not, you're going to refuse to use it, right? So... Basically, once the priesthood of, like, the raw, like, essence where you're not refining yourself, and the other one is the the version of refinement, you know? So it's an uh, understanding of refinement, basically, between the two priesthoods. And then when you refine things, this is how you get civilization. So when you look at, like, essentially, like, you could say, like, primitive people, like, if you want to call it that, that's just for lack of a better word, but tribal people who still live in tribes and they don't really, like, refine things, they don't really use the fire element like that, um... That's more of, like, you could relate that to even, like, that priesthood of Melchizedek in a way. Like, the the refined, the raw one. And then the refined version relates to the priesthood of Aaron. And that relates to, like, studying, um, refining yourself, um, like, refining your knowledge, refining your wisdom. It has to do with alchemy. So in alchemy, there's the, um, I explained this in the... So yeah, again, I'm going. I'm getting too deep into mysticism. I explained a lot of this in uh, the mysticism video, but when you see these alchemical symbols, 
I explained this all in the mysticism video, so I'm not going to explain this really, but you just got to go watch that video. So this whole process, when you turn lead into gold, you go from lead, you go from lead, oh my, you go from lead to tin, to copper, to quicksilver, to iron, to silver, to gold. That's how you go lead to gold. And now, you see how there's a moon, there's a cross, and then there's a sun. Those three things relate to the super consciousness, the, the self, like the self-conscious or the consciousness, and then the moon represents the subconscious mind. So you start with your sub, you start with your yourself over your subconscious mind. So you have to, you have to basically pick up your cross or whatever. You have to essentially flip this. You see how this is a mirror image of each other. You have to put your subconscious self, like how your reactions over your physical actions to start that refinement process. So you have to get into your mind and start thinking about what you did and start thinking about your actions. You, use, like, you react over your actions now. And then from there, you basically um, put the good of the all and your how you connect to everybody over your actions as well. Now after that, you get into the process of becoming balanced because this is like the only one with all three as you can see in this image right now because one of the other outer planets has all three as well I think it's Neptune or something that has it or Uranus one of the two but then you can put you put basically your subconscious over this is just basically a balanced way of looking at this you have your you have yourself then you have the overall over yourself like how you connect everybody over yourself and then you have the reactions on top of it like your subconscious mind so I'm not going to explain the details of this because I explained more in the mysticism video and it's just too much to even get into. But then once you get it after that, you get into this where you, um, what do you call it? Since you put the good of, now you can put yourself over the, over the all because you have the good of everybody in your heart and like you're basically, basically you're becoming an individual that's working for the all now. And then after that, like now you're refined into iron, which is strong as well, obviously. And then you become silver, which is just the state of like subconsciousness, and then you become one with the all. And like I showed you in the show Watchmen, he has the symbol on his forehead, but this isn't in the mysticism video, so but the state of alchemical process, which clearly like Thoth was the god of alchemy, right? Has to do with the refinement, right? And like I keep saying Thoth and Aaron and Tehuti and Anubis and Moses and all that stuff, they're all they're all related. They're not the exact same, but they're all related. Like they're all all, all related with this Freemasonic shit. So, when it comes down to it, like, Ethiopia was the birthplace of um, Nimrod, who created Babylon. So they got this science, essentially, from the original Masons, and Ethiopia is not just the current country of Ethiopia. This was basically, um, this was huge. Ethiopia was huge. When you look at ancient pictures on, like, maps, where it shows, like, even, like, the entirety of Africa is Ethiopia, that's still not it. Like, it included... Hindu Kush was pretty much everything of, like, the Middle East, which is Northeast Africa, and basically Asia and all that stuff is basically part of Hindu Kush. This is why they have the lion in China, and this is why all the languages and stuff are connected. And I'm, again, doing this in the language and whitewashing of history video. Now, and North America, South America, all that stuff is connected as well, because the Kushites and the Olmecs and all them people were all one culture, and that's just been proven by multiple people. Now, this was taken, so look at it like, when I show you, when I show you this, these guys basically took this shit from us. Because, like, basically, like, if you look at, like, the Bible as, like, a confederation of, like, connecting all the religions and all these other things, the spiritual travels of all the peoples, and we already had our own confederation, we had our own everything, you know? Like, we had that goes into the whitewashing video but this was taken by these people now they're basically oppressing all the original people on the planet and all this type of stuff and um, this is where the Sith took over the confederation at Star Wars and such right and like that's basically what the orcs and like all these guys in Lord of the Rings are trying to do to the those like beings and stuff like the, the other people and stuff right so essentially when you get into the order of Tehuti it's learning how to work with alchemy, and it has to do with, when you understand that process of, like, pulling a Houdini and talking about that immortality thing I was talking about, because it gets into that Anunnaki aspect, so when you, 
um, look at the aspect of immortality. It's essentially getting away from the natural principles. Because look at it like this. When you get... Because look at it like the Osirian... When you understand Osiris, and if you look at it from like the Osirian... I would call this like the Osirian ritual. Like, I'm just going to call it that, essentially. Like, how he died and then Horus was the reincarnation of him. Essentially, it's like your child is the future. Like, the children are the future in a way. And like, your child is the progression of you and like the um the continuation of you and then this immortality thing becomes like it, it's going on that goal of immortality is essentially the the process to lead you to a society where you just be like basically like you become like the elite that is like oppressing everybody else because you're on this path of immortality and such right and you have to hoard things like a dragon and which is like the sith and all these types of things so when it gets into that, the um, the different levels of it, like this, kind of has to do with Tahuti in a way. So, essentially, like the Osirian ritual, it's just because what happens is all your life experiences get stored into your DNA, and then when you have a child with like another with a woman, right, you transfer that DNA to your kid, and your kid has all your memories within him, but he's a progression of you and growing. But then when you just become like um, you just say you're going to be like immortal and like all this other stuff and you start changing the cycles you how do how do i put this like that's when you get out of the egyptian side of things like how kind of how egypt is and you start getting into more of the process of creating a separate civilization of like almost immortals where you keep trying to keep non-stop progressing and things like that and you have to do it within this lifetime like where you can't like you have to do everything within one lifetime instead of uh multiple life cycles right and it starts changing things and this is where the anunnaki and neturu separation come in and start to play out so um when when nimrod basically created his own civilization that was basically the him separating from the rest to create this like Hindu immortal civilization if is the easiest way to put it um and go into future and like basically like just basically become this group where like you have to keep siphoning energy off people and creating works work slave like basically all that kind of stuff slaves and all that type of stuff so and going against the natural order and for making your own order and stuff like that so essentially that's kind of where the fall of certain beings and all this type of stuff comes into play and yeah that's like again a kind of another topic so yeah and Tehuti has to do with that alchemy and stuff like that so when you understand that alchemy process because like once you become gold if you think about it gold never tarnishes right gold is immortal so once you become that gold it's essentially talking about like that immortality aspect so even when I showed people um Dr. Manhattan And how he, um, has this on his head. That's the symbol of gold in the alchemy I just showed you, right? And he's a immortal in the show, in the, in this show and movie Watchmen, right? So that's representing that. And even one thing that's random too, but in Japan, there's this position that you sit in called, um, uh, Siza or Saiza, right? And you've seen this too. It's in martial arts and all this stuff. You just sit like this on your knees with your, like, you just sit like this, right? And in Watchmen, there was a, when he was about to die, he was sitting in this position. So he was basically in the Hebrew Japanese kind of customs, you know, like, so he was, the fact that he was sitting in this position shows you the connection between that two, but it's to stimulate energy and all this stuff. So it, when it comes into Buddhism, because that's obviously tied with Judah and that Judah, Yehuda is obviously tied with Tehuti. So Tehuti was the scribe, right? And you could say... This has just a lot to do with Moses and Aaron and things like that, essentially. And, like, Aaron and Moses basically authored and wrote the uh, first five books of the Bible, right? Well, in interpretation of God, right? But, like, they wrote they wrote the five books of the Bible, the first five, right? So they were basically the beginning of, like, Genesis. Like, they wrote, they wrote these original stories, right? Now, when you look at um, even Moses, when he was put into the Nile River... That must have mean like 
he because Egypt is at the as at the top of the Nile River, but the source of the Nile River is Ethiopia. So he must have been placed somewhere between Ethiopia Sudan area before to to even go all the way to Egypt to like that's where the Hebrews must have been occupied. When I see like Ethiopia tribe of Judah or line of Judah and like all that kind of stuff, like there's a reason why they're all tied together now. Uh, and Moses, when I say like in the Bible, because the because Ethiopia is the first place mentioned in the Bible, which is why it's tied to Garden the Garden of Eden. So it's the first place mentioned in the Bible, and then then I think it was like Egypt and then like Babylon and stuff like that. So it, e Ethiopia or Kush was the first one, and then essentially now with the order of Tehudi. So when you understand this about alchemy and the siphoning energy, so there's levels to it in the in the ver in the in the side of the the way the world works right now, like, look at it like this. If, if you were just, like, if you're in, like, grade one of, like, learning how to siphon energy, that would basically be like a vampire. You just drink people's blood and shit like that, right? Werewolves are also immortal, and they eat people's organs, right? Zombies eat people's brains, but zombies are kind of, like, a little bit out of this. So, now, essentially, let's say you go from drinking blood to eating human, like, cannibalism, essentially. And then, well, drinking blood is cannibalism, too, but... You're almost going from like a food to liquidarian diet, but either way, those two schools are directly t connected together. Now, after you get from the vampire area, now you want to get your wings, basically, right, and move up. That has to do with this. Just looks like a straight up demon to you, obviously. So, uh, a vampire with wings, like let's say if you don't have to need, drink blood anymore, you have to know how to vampirically suck energy from people, right? And that's like a higher way of being a vampire. So, if you can essentially do that then that's like another level of immortality and then once you get past that level of immortality of like being a demon because that's just being a demon at that point um you could say once you graduate from like the demon level you can get to the level of almost being like a dragon in a sense like you can look at it like that and that's what i'm trying to say like these vampires and werewolves and all this type of stuff is part of the order of tahuti in a way like they're but like the perverted version of it now so you could say like this raising of the Jed, which because when you when I showed you the raising of the Jed, um, and this is obviously the spine as well, right? Your your Kundalini energy has to do with the seven chakras, which have to do with your spine, right? And when you raise your Kundalini energy, that's called your serpent energy or your dragon energy. Like they're directly related to sexual energy, but and like the vampires have that sexual energy to them, obviously. But you is related to dragon and serpent energy. They say it's a coiled serpent. And then once you raise the energy up, it's a cobra standing, right? So, because the cobra standing is just full of energy, right? So, when you're doing that, just think about it. Like, that's clearly, this is clearly, like, activating your lightsaber on a metaphoric sense before you actually hold a real lightsaber. Like, active, like doing it in a literal sense within your own body would be raising your serpent and dragon energy in the order of Tehuti. So... Yeah, like, that's all the Jed, Shahuti, like, this Kundalini energy, like, the Hinduism and all that kind of stuff, like, when I just related Hinduism to the Anunnaki and all that, like, you, you should be able to make all these connections at this point, you know what I mean? And, um, that's, like, one of the first steps to, you could say, getting on that vampiristic aspect of things, so, this has to do with perfect posture. Like, because you have to be able to hold perfect posture to circulate energy to every aspect of your body effectively. And Buddhism, meditation, and, like, Hinduism, well, mainly Buddhism specifically, is perfect for having per perfect posture. Because when you meditate in different yogic postures, when you actually learn how to meditate in different postures, you're opening up different portals, energetic portals, to siphon energy, essentially. But at the same time, you're learning how to strengthen your spine and, like, your muscles so that it can hold certain positions at certain times or in, in different positions, but at the same time, it's learning how to be flexible enough so that you can basically move in every single direction possible, because multi-directional um, movement is directly related to multi-dimensional movement. So when you know how to do all these things, like this is why Buddhism um, and then martial arts strengthens you and also trains the mind to connect with the body and to move correctly in all dimensions and in all forms, you know? So there's a reason why all of these it's a sacred science but at the end of the day it's learning how to tap into interdimensional portals and things like that to work with certain energies and things like that so 
And meditation is important because it opens you up to astral travel, astral projection, all these stuff. And this is why the Trinity was talking about mind, spirit, uh, sorry, soul, spirit, and body, and keeping those three connected. Because once you start astral projecting, astral traveling, you're disconnecting the body from the soul and the spirit. So you're not working within the Trinity or the Elohim anymore. And it just becomes the thing where um, you go down a path of the dark side, essentially, which is you eventually if you see the end goal it becomes like the elites that are ruling today so it's just there's reasons why there's like limits on certain things and only priests are supposed to tap into certain things and stuff like that and sacred chants and all these different things out here so there's more i can get into with this but i don't want to make this too long i just want to make this a continuation of the spiritual warfare part one and two and kind of explain why it's actually like people are like oh get religion out of this but it's like no like you y'all everybody acts like religion people are just stupid for creating religions or, or following religions and all this type of shit and it's like no one had time to wait no one was wasting time back then there was a reason why everyone was doing what they were doing and just discounting it now because you googled some shit is beyond stupid at this point so at the end of the day like understanding all this is pretty important and like people basically took the order of christ if you want to really call it that and changed it into this dark side of things and understanding how to harness energy for themselves and that's basically where the it's it's the serpent versus mankind and if you want to call it angels or whatever you want to call it but it's the serpent versus everything else because they 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 don't work on they don't work on these principles that the same principles as everybody else so so yeah this is clearly how when i say judah and Yehuda and Tehudi and Buddha and then Buddhism is related to stabilizing your spine and like all this type of stuff that's why there's all the different meditation poses like the seated position I just showed you and why Kundalini energy which is related to Buddha and Buddhism and Hinduism right and um, a lot of other like Taoism Taoism and all this type of stuff right and thoughts is also related to Libra Tehudi is related to Libra with the scales of Ma'at and then Taoism is about balance which is balancing the scales and these Asian religions, so the Hebrew culture is related to that, Tehuti, Yehuda, and then even Quetzalcoatl is Tehuti, which I don't even want to get into that right now, and that's too much, so, and that's a dragon, a feathered serpent, so, the fact that all these are related, and then I said that basically these Hindu, um, you can call them Hindu Ethiopians, but these Hindu, well, I guess they are Hindu Ethiopians, they're Hindu Kush, but these Hindus, ran off with the <laughs> they ran off with the knowledge and created certain immortal societies and this is why like the white people like um that well europeans especially but this is why like dravidian indians more are like related to europeans and then also the people the europeans are not really the issue like the people that are in power are related more to these dravidian indians and stuff like that because they come from those cultures this is also why one thing I also kind of forgot to go into, but I've talked about it in other videos, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But when I talked about CERN, because I'm not going to really get into CERN, but this, this is why sh there's a giant Shiva statue outside of st outside of CERN, because Shiva is a Hindu god of destruction. And I don't really, again, I'm not going to get into this because this is more like a, for my spiritual warfare part two or part one video, I talked about all this stuff. So there's a reason why they follow this Hindu stuff, and then yeah, the Hindu stuff goes into even Dragon Ball Z, like how they just showed up. Uh, Shenron, the dragon Shenron, that has the seven Dragon Balls and grants evil wish, that has to do with um, Shenron is Tehuti and Quetzalcoatl, and the seven Dragon Balls have to do with the seven um, chakras and stuff like that. So. You see these people in the, like, straight hair and all that, and Dravidian Indian, and, um, uh, no. Because, yeah, we can all produce albino kids, but then when you have a... This looks more like white people than, like, Europeans that we have today, than, um, than if, a, like, a African... If we had an African albino. An African albino looks a lot different than a Dravidian albino, you know? So, it's just at the end of the day. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's nothing against Dravidian Indians, but at the end of the day, like, 
and to say where a lot of this stuff comes in because there is a split like these people split off from the original people and then basically went down this path of you could say the dark side like in Star Wars and um, yeah we're here today <laughs> in 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 this battle and this, and this is why this there's demonic energy and when people talk about uh, what's it called this is when we talk about demonic energy <laughs> this is why when people talk about demonic energy and um, CERN and quarantine and all that kind of stuff this is how this is all tied together like this is literally how this is all tied together because at the end of the day like a lot of these a lot of things have happened there's demons that have been quarantined a lot of the demons that you even see today um, if you see demons, I mean, a lot of the demon, demonic energy that's messing with people isn't even, it's people tapping into them interdimensionally because they're not even here right now. But then there's people that have, like, have part demonic energy and they're using that, but people haven't even seen real demons yet. Like, that's why in the Bible and Revelations when it talks about the, and people keep talking about plagiarization, but I don't see any prophecies in any other religion about what the hell's happening except in, like, Nordic mythology about Ragnarok, but it's still not even the same thing. So, when it talks about prophecy and um, the seven year tribulation and all that kind of stuff it's like the demons get to rule for the first half of the tri tribulation tribulation, and that means like when quarantine breaks the demons go crazy and shit like that so I'm just saying people need to be more prepared and there's a reason why people are like you just feel like a whole different energy around it. like if I'm making videos or certain other people are making videos there's a completely different energy than certain other people's videos that you listen to and when you're around certain people. And if, it, if what you're after is just power, essentially, like... If you've seen Star Wars, you should understand the whole... Pr what, what just going for power and trying to be a dictator leads to. I don't even need to get into that, so... <laughs> you should just, just go watch Star Wars and learn this from the movie, but... Um, at the end of the day, uh, I think I got into everything I wanted to on the Spiritual Warfare Part 3 video, because if anything, I'll just do a Part 4 eventually in the future when it's relevant. Um, it's annoying. You could just say demonic shit is messing with my mics. <laughs> it, shit is annoying, but I don't know if I, if I was... If I didn't want to be exposed, I would do some shit like this too to make people not listen to it, so... Yeah. Bible. Our shit. Stolen from Ethiopia. I didn't really try to prove it in this video. I showed you some information, little amounts of information, but um, the oldest Bible I showed you in the world is the oldest one that we're willing to show people. Because I guarantee you we got shit that's even older. Way older. We got a lot of stuff. Like, there's a reason why, like, our spirituality is not to be messed with. There's a reason why we've never lost a war or any of these types of things. There's a reason why it's in, in a place that reigns. This is literally right at the source of the Nile River. Lake Tana is right here. It's beside Lalibela. There's a reason why um, this church, there's 11 churches carved out of this mountain in New Jerusalem. There's a reason why it's never rained in here. And the rain water is just never gone in there. It's like a spiritual, there's something different about this place. And, there's a reason why we have the Ark of the Covenant. There's a reason why when the Queen of Sheba married King Solomon, and they had their only child, and then he, came, he left the Ark of the Covenant, or they left the Ark of the Covenant and came back here. First of all, there's a reason why the Queen of Sheba, who's an Ethiopian, and King Solomon, who was a Hebrew, were able to even communicate with each other, apparently, when they were their different cultures, and that you, if these languages obviously have to be tied together for them to speak to each other. Same with, um, what's it called? Moses and his Ethiopian wife and the Ethiopian eunuch and the frickin' millions of Ethiopians in the Bible. But <laughs> um, <laughs> Clearly we're speaking different dialects of the same language, but they're able to communicate with each other. So, okay, computer. The keyboard just wants to not work anymore here. Okay. And there's also a reason when I showed you the word Tehuti. This is how you spell Tehuti in the Egyptian. There's a reason why this is literally the word David in our in our language, in Amharic. And King David is the father of King Solomon, who 
connects all the way to Hadi Selassie. Which, there's a reason why the Ra Safaris do every single thing they do. Every single thing. <laughs> so, and not just like the bad ones that are just like out there just for dreads and weed and that's really all they care about. But I mean the ones that are really on their shit, you know? So there's a, there's a reason why you, when you listen to Rasta music and all that stuff, you feel a type of way. And Dehuti, and I relate that to Dehuti and David and the, that, that order is like the real order of Dehuti and the real, you could say, uh, immortal. <laughs> It's the easiest way I'll put it, so... I'm telling you, we don't just carve this shit out of the ground in the same way pyramids were basically built. For no reason. There's, there's a reason why there's an Ethiopian priest right now. Just type in on YouTube, New Lalibela, and there's an Ethiopian priest. I think this is actually a picture of part of it, like a tiny part of, part of it. But he's carving out his own giant, uh, giant Lalibela. Like, Lalibela is a king who basically created these other 11 churches, right? Like, him and, the, him and the Ethiopians at that time. But I'm saying, he's constructing another Lalibela right now. So there's a reason why we still haven't stopped building these type of mounds and, like, different things. And there's also a reason why, when you look at the Nile River, the source of the Nile River goes to Lake Tana, which is right here. 85% of the water of the Nile comes right from right here. The other 15% of the Nile River comes from this, this two streams of the Nile River that meet. 85% of the Nile River water comes from here. And there's a reason why Lalibela is built right here. And when you look at the galactic center of the universe, because people want to be like, oh, the pyramids line up to Orion, but they don't care what the monuments over here line up to. The reason why this is lined up with the galactic center of the universe, also known as the Gate of the Man, or sorry, the Gate of the Dragon, in, in astrology. In, in the Sagittarius area where the galactic center is, where Ophiuchus is, it's called the, Galact the Gate of the Dragon. And then near Gemini and near Orion, in the exact opposite area, is the Gate of... what's it called? The Gate of Man. And Orion's obviously the man, right? So, in the opposite side of the Nile, there's a reason why this lines up with the Gate of the Dragon, which is the Gate to Immortality, and there's one that's the Gate to the Man. There's mystery schools that people have no clue about, and they just stop learning because Ethiopia connects it all. But then, at the end of the day, they're just... Um, they get over... they got caught over semantics and stupid uh, stupid little things. And then, um, when they talk about the gods came from the highlands, and this is literally the highlands, the mountains of the moon, the Egyptians said they came from and all this so it's just at the end of the day they want to get they want to just complain about every little thing that's going on in the evil society they're a part of the, the reason why the Rastafaris are on their back to Africa type of stuff and move to Shusha money and Shusha money is land given by Haile Selassie to people of the diaspora when we clearly didn't have to do any of that because we have no connection to slavery or any of that kind of stuff and we just gave land for people to come back and have citizenship, all that type of stuff, so, in a new Jerusalem, but, again, people want to just complain about every little thing and all this type of shit, but, this is the new Lalibela. He carved, one priest carved all of this out by himself, in this lifetime, right now, while we're all alive right now, he's not old, <laughs> he's doing this all by himself, and it's crazy, man, so, yeah, we clearly know, we clearly did not lose sacred sciences and sacred things, so, again, the spiritual warfare part 3 video is essentially telling you that it's Ethiopia versus Rome, um, we are about mysteries, we don't really give up a lot of our mysteries, I just, I didn't even go into Ethiopia, but we have so many mysteries on our, in Ethiopia, the reason why the Bible could have been written, well, not could have been, but was written basically there, and, the papyrus tree originates in Ethiopia and Egypt. Uh, there's a reason why Egypt and Ethiopia are the people who originated writing. There's a reason why what's it called? the hottest place on the or earth is in Ethiopia. And it's called the Daskil, I'm butchering the pronunciation, but Daskil Depression, where scientists set up shop so that they can, when they monitor the activity right there, they, it tells them the activity of was happening on the Pacific Rim, which is the volcanic activity of the, the, like the volcanoes on the Pacific Rim in the Pacific Ocean, and the volcanoes that erupt in the Pacific Ocean, 
dictate the tectonic activity of the Earth, and those tect the tectonic activity tells you when continents shift and new land rises out of the water and lands go into the water. So by studying that location, you can study, it, you can prophesize what happens in the future. I'm just saying, there's a lot of mysteries that people are overlooking, and they're just getting caught up in a lot of superiority complex. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, it's, uh, the Rastas have this figured out, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Rastas. The Rastas know. Um, the Rastas know the truth, and the Bible is not a bad thing. People will have so many excuses why it's bad, but it's like, no. Maybe because it's telling that demon inside of you to stop acting out, so. <laughs> but at the end of the day, yeah, completely. It's not just like the country of Ethiopia, there's just way more than that. Like the, whole, the biggest man made structure in the world is like the, the wall of Benin, um, Benin, I think. It's the largest wall in the world, way bigger than the Great Wall of China, the largest man made structure in the world. Like, freaking the wall of, uh, that surrounded Benin that was destroyed by colonizers. Like, Africa is something that people are overlooking and they just do not want to connect to and just want to. Uh, it's just ridiculous. So, when. Yeah, when there's so much um, people are overlooking. But. Uh, yeah, and like I've said before, the cross is not a interpretation of the Ankh. The Ankh is a letter in the Ethiopian language, and so is the cross. It's a letter in the Ethiopian language. Our crosses are completely different than, um, than the Roman Catholics. So, I'm telling you, if the Romans started the religion, why don't they have the oldest Bible in the world? Yeah, so, at the end of the day, uh, people can believe what they want, so I was just doing that to clear a lot of stuff up because, I don't know, I just have a really easy ability to like, just know certain things and a lot of these things. I'm not even trying to sound cocky, but there's a lot of things about this that I know that I'm also not speaking on because I've spoken a lot and I clearly, uh, <laughs> like, it would take me a long time to explain a lot of the things I'm explaining, so I should, or I'm, uh, that I want to explain, so I, there's a lot of videos still to be done, but at the end of the day, do your research, and when I say research, I don't just mean Google things, but yeah, spiritual warfare part three video is really about demons, and it's really about interdimensional warfare and stuff, and things like that, so I'll do a part four video eventually to maybe even include, or I'll do a part four and a part five, but we'll see, it'll be, part four will be start to be relevant over the next couple months, and then probably by the end of this year, I'll probably even hit a part five, because it doesn't, I'll, I'll start that, but yeah, still gonna do the calendar part two, whitewashing the history video, video on languages, um, and a couple others. So yeah, with that.